Well, welcome back. It is Paul from Ski Instructor Academy. I am sitting as ever with Andy from Snow Camps Europe. Um, so Andy, we had a big conversation um, about the associations around the world and we were discussing really about ski instructors and, and examinations, etc. And we thought it'd be a great follow-up to look at why is it that some people never, ever make it to the next level? So, you know, they do either a Basie 1, 2 or a Canadian or an Austrian qualification. And then it just escapes them the next step up. Yep. You know, what, what's your opinion, Andy? Well, there's lots of different reasons, I would say. Um, obviously, in my personal kind of story is, I would say, age and injury stopped me from going to the next one. Um, I would hope that if I hadn't had the injury, I would have eventually got there. Um, but I also think, um, again, for me personally, the injury didn't help, but also the level and what's expected just to get on that course is maybe out of reach to certain people anyway. Yeah. You know? And do you think that in, inherently makes them then um, a lesser instructor than somebody who did make that next step up? No, not at all. Um if anything, um, it probably hinders some of the better ski teachers from gaining their top level qualification because of what is required. And again, especially at age and following an injury. So um, we've spoken about this on other podcasts. My, my, my head now holds me back quite a bit because I don't want to injure myself again. Um, and therefore... With the Austrian system, as we've spoken about before, you have this entry exam for the level four where you have to do um, what what is pretty much a, a, a pre-Euro test. If you pass that, then you can go on and you can do the other elements. And if you pass, you get taken onto the, the, the Stratlik course and away you go. But without passing that race, um, you're not going to get on that course. Um, and that in itself, I would say, holds back some very talented ski teachers who would probably pass the other elements but not the race. And especially yeah, if, okay. if you, in my case, I incurred my injury training for that race. Yeah. So that race is now my my wall, let's say, you know. But I would think it, it's similar for a lot of other people. But I, I, no, I think a lot of talented teachers probably get stopped or held back because of the level of requirement. Um, not so much in other associations, I wouldn't say, but obviously within... Well, no, the because in that, other associations, you can do any of the modules anyway. If you've yeah. passed your level two, you're welcome to, to start your level, your level three. three. If you've your passed your level three, you're not yeah. restricted. Whereas in Austria, you are restricted. You have to pass a pre-test yeah, to go in the test. There is a filter. There's a filter, yeah. <laughs> yes. Which is a shame, as you say, but I think it's, it's very, very important that we stress that law when you walk through a ski school door um, how do you judge whether you're getting a good instructor it's difficult because you might say okay I look at it and I go oh this guy's a level you know a diploma level qualified instructor and um, so therefore he must be better than that guy who's only a level three or level two for yeah. example and you could be absolutely wrong in fact you probably will be wrong as well yeah, most of the time yeah, yeah most of the time it's, it's not to do with that because <laughs> You know, first of all, 95%, if not more, of the recreational clientele, even we're talking good skiers, you know, if you've got 100 weeks or even 200 weeks of skiing, it's still a drop in the ocean to what a lot of, let's say, you know, people who do it as their job um, experience have. They have far more um, time on snow and they, if they're older, you know, and this is why I, I did remember writing a big article for about people who rush through uh, the qualifications and they're about you know 23 24 and they've already done their level four etc you have to look at what is the depth of their knowledge not mm -hmm. not i'm not saying they're not awesome skiers but what life experience do they then bring in to try and share their wealth of experience and also they've clearly had it quite easy they've clearly marched through all the qualifications which puts in their brain why can't that I'd do it? Like, if I can yeah. do it, he can do it. No. And then they end up dealing with somebody who's 45, 55, 65, and it frustrates that person because they're going, well, what's so difficult about this? And they, they don't understand. They don't have the depth of knowledge to be yeah. able to try and assist somebody. Yeah. And I, and I think that's the, the issue that it's difficult because unless the association separate the two elements out, i.e., the coaching side mm -hmm. and the practical side, 
then a client coming in can only look at one piece of paper and go, this is the guy's overall yep. ski mark, if you like, as a, mm -hmm. as a coach. It's, it's not showing me, was he a, a, a B student in coaching and an A student in skiing, or was it the other way around? Yeah, yeah, it's too one-dimensional. Um, I think the, 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 the overriding question of what, what stops people from pro progressing, like obviously my, my, my thing was one thing, and the, then the, the, the route that you have to take is another, but we were talking earlier about things like moguls. When it comes to moguls in your level two and three, a lot of people also get caught out with moguls and we've talked about the need that it's not just to practice moguls on the hill but to practice the movements and other movements off the hill which is yeah. kind of what you you get a lot of people doing in the gym and i think a lot of people think um because it's a skiing exam i just need to ski i need to practice skiing and there's a couple of people within caprun who i think fall into this category that they they think that they should go skiing every single day and practice and practice and practice. But what they should actually do is take their ski boots off. And as you said earlier, go in the gym and do whatever you would be telling them to do. Because it's not, it's not possible for them to do it on the skis. So, Yeah, and that's a moving platform. Yeah. If, if you can't make some sort of movement, let's say it's the, you know, the eccentric movement within the bumps or something, and it's really confusing you when you're sliding down a, a mogul field, and that's a moving platform, and you, you're getting exercises thrown at you by idiot instructors, you know, taking the poles off you or telling you to stick them in front or whatever, and you still can't do it, you need to get off the skis, as Andy says, get onto the hard ground and go, right, can I actually replicate this movement when I'm in a safe environment? Oh, oh, shit, I can't actually. Yeah. All right, well, that's probably why I can't do it on the skis. Exactly. So let's now practice that movement again and again and again and again on the dry land and then go back onto the hill and, hey, presto, suddenly the movement pattern's ingrained and things progress again. But I think you're right. There's that progression curve that suddenly plateaus, no matter who you are. Now, recreational skiers talk about this when they come in ski schools. Oh, I'm at a plateau. Yeah. And ski instructors have the same problem. Mm -hmm. They plateau because they tick off all the boxes that they're good at. I don't know, let's say they're, they're really good short turners, they're really good carvers or whatever, and they tick them boxes, but they hate off-piste and they avoid it, yeah. and they avoid it, and they avoid the crud, they avoid the powder, because that's not their, their, their niche. It's not enjoyable, it's difficult. Yeah. yeah. And as a ski instructor, unfortunately, you have to do the stuff you don't enjoy. Whereas a recreational skier can just go, hey, I don't like that. I'm not doing it. Yeah, I'm I'll just stay, stay, I'll on, stay on the groomed piece. I'll take the nice... Yeah, I'll go down, off at one o'clock before it chops up. I'm, I'm happy as Larry. Yeah. A ski instructor doesn't have that. But we we have to, to be firm and fair to say that I have found over the... Over the last couple of decades from a teaching point of view that sometimes somebody who is not as qualified practically has a great base of knowledge and understanding that they can share better than other instructors and they can put that information across to people so well they just know how to handle people and how to talk to people and that to me makes them the better instructor i don't care in our team how good somebody can ski it's, you know, it looks cool. It looks cool when we post it up on Instagram or whatever. Yeah, it's great. But what's most important to us is how they work as a team with us and how they work with their clients. We were our clients yep. at Ski Instructor Academy. And we have to remember, Andy, our clients can be difficult. A lot of them are 18 to 21. It's hard work and, um, you know, getting a rapport, getting a connection. And equally, we have a lot of people who are 60 and in their 70s who also expect respect and they want to be dealt with correctly. And being the best skier and being able to ski moguls or going through the Euro test does not make you the best coach. No, not at all, not at all. I, something else that's just popped into my mind with this as well is if you are that person who is struggling to get to the next level and it becomes apparent that you're not going to do it through whatever reason, so what? Yeah, go off, but Andy, not so what, but go off and think, okay, I can't do that. But what I can do is I can do, and I'll bring this up in the next podcast, is something like, oh, I'll do Anatomy 101. I'll, I'll learn a little bit about the body. Mm -hmm. So I can get even somebody who's a better skier than me, 
I can see things and even help that person because that's what coaches are about. Yeah. You know what the the Olympics are about to start, and some of the coaches and coaching staff will not be a scratch, not being close to these guys who are performing, but they come from a background of sports science or they come from a background of understanding anatomy or you know whatever it may be, and they bring that expertise in. So maybe if you can't do it from a skiing basis, you look and think, well, okay, I'll, I'll go off and do a coaching course. I'll improve my coaching skills, for example. So you can still um, get the respect that you're looking for, because I think that's what people are thinking. Ah, if I get to my level three, ah, oh, that's it, I'm going to get all this respect. No, <laughs> it doesn't matter who you are. You're not going to get that respect. You need to earn that respect through your good coaching. Um, and that won't make any difference whether you're a level two, level three or a level four. And mm -hmm. um, that, 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 that respect will come as more and more people talk about you and they say, oh, I had this guy. This is fantastic. I'm coming back next year. He's really good. You know, he connects with me, etc. And yeah. Once again, he may not be the tidiest through the bumps, or he may not be the guy who can carve faster than somebody else. It's not of interest because let's face it, most people coming on a holiday want, you know, like a good example is, is with your stuff, Snow Camps Europe, is that, you know, you're more around the um, the whole experience, yeah, you know, yeah. trying to have them enjoy it. Yeah. You know, it's even the nighttime. It's it's what's happening at nighttime. It's it's what's happening with a crack, the going in the hut and place. You know, this is different to, to Ski Instructor Academy, Academy's module. Um, and, you know, that's, that's the package for them. That's what they see is the good instructor is somebody who has the knowledge of the area mm -hmm. and, you know, makes it fun. Yeah, yeah. Take some, take some places they wouldn't normally go and whatnot yeah um I, I, again i think if 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 let's say it was le at level three you get stuck at level three and you can't go beyond level three so maybe but yeah it's so, <laughs> so what but also don't forget you can go and do a tour in level one and two you can go and do a snowboard Tell you can mark. go and do yeah <laughs> if you want to carry on through learning and progressing your skills then you, there are other things out there to do you don't have to get to level four be a level three at four things. You're probably better than yeah. any level four that's only concentrated on one. I think. I think from my side, if if you know you feel like your skiing reaches a limit, it sometimes you have to accept some things. And I think you've said it. Like we're all getting older, and there's always going to be a limit. You know, you have to not not saying that you should be striving to be better every year and faster, etc. But Age does catch up, etc., and injuries, etc., family life, whatever it may be. So maybe redirection is a great way to look at it as well and think, okay, I love my skiing and I want to improve my ability to teach within the ski school, whatever it is, but I'm going to go off and I'm going to do, I don't know, a kayaking course or a biking course or a whatever it is, because that skill will fit into your ski teaching in the season. You know, you'll be to use what you learn and bring it into your lesson. So doing something completely diverse is important, which is why every two years I try to learn something new from scratch. And um, where I'm the student, I know nothing about it, and I have to go back to the beginning. And it's a great way to improve your listening skills mm -hmm. <laughs> because, you know, people tend to not use the, their ears and mouth in the right ratio. Mm. Um, and it's a, it's just a great way to go back to the start and also to, to, ta to challenge your mind and to, to, to challenge you in a different direction physically, for example. Marcel Hirscher was a great example, you know, for those who you don't know, certainly one of the best skiers of all time who recently retired. And I remember reading an article about him one summer a couple of years back, and he said he felt sorry for the people who spend their summers on the glaciers here in Europe. And this is the best skier in the world telling people, stop skiing. You don't have to ski as much as you think to be the best in the world. Yeah. And he did mountain biking, um, he was always on the cross bikes, he was doing all sorts of other sports, even though he was the world's best by far in slalom, in giant slalom, etc. He was incredible, but he did not train in the same way as like Andy said, skiing every day. Yeah. I've got to get up there and ski from morning to night. That's not the answer. Not yeah. the answer. And yeah, so why do people fail to make it to the next level? Maybe it is just that's it. Or maybe you're not identifying. If you're younger, of course, you know, if you're, you know, 25 to 35, 40, yeah. you should, should still be able to progress. And the only reason you won't be is from my side is first, 
strength and conditioning it's so important and skiing is all about coordination agility as well speed and power you need to improve those areas and you know we know people who have let themselves down going for the level three and going for the level four because they just haven't taken it seriously enough Mm -hmm. i think i would say from a physical point of view but also from the mental point of view because they've allowed themselves to take the easy way out the easy approach to life if you like mm-hmm. and if you want to reach that goal unfortunately you've got to sacrifice yeah i think also um you've got to be open to being coached and being um open to, to learning because if you're stumbling if you are in that age bracket and you're doing the physical stuff but you're not progressing and you're not getting there then you might not be listening to what the teachers the coaches are saying to you or you know you might be saying i i am a good skier i can pass it where in fact you're possibly not as good as you think you are you need to listen to the coaches and you need to do what they say and then you will become the next level to enable you to pass that qualification yeah which is we've said it before in some of our ski analysis programs um here that as a coach what do you want you want somebody coachable the first thing you want is somebody that is open to listening and they're, you know, they're going to work with you. They're going to work as a team with you. As soon as you get somebody closing that door, you have to look at their their archetype, their character archetype and think, right, what type of person is this? How am I going to break down them barriers? And that's what a good coach will do. They will break the barriers down and eventually they'll, they'll, they'll get through to this person, this student. But really, you can do a lot of favours as a student. Break your own barriers down first. Yeah. As Andy said, look, you want to learn to ski. So what's the point of paying or what's the point of going up there and getting, you know, somebody to teach you when actually uh, shaking your head behind them all the time you're not actually it's, listening? It, it's the old, um, when somebody comes to you and says, I, kn- I know I need to improve this. So you spend two hours or a day with them working on this. And then you say, okay, see you later, see you tomorrow. And you ride in the lift down and you see them ski down and what are they doing? exactly what they were doing before the start of the day uh, so they've 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 listened during the day and then gone oh, i'll go back to what i was doing yeah yeah you know? it reminds me of when when you had the you know, you're teaching the group and um you've got i don't know eight people and you explain something to them about some short turn you're doing some technique and you say yeah you know like look at me go down here then come down one at a time whatever and as you ski off as soon as you ski away there's one guy in the group who starts talking and educating the group, <laughs> telling them what they, need to, them what they need to be doing. Yeah. And then nobody's looking at you ski down anymore because they're listening to this guy talking. It's like, and I'll say to the group, did you pay him? <laughs> or did you pay me? The attention. <laughs> yeah. No, me, the money. What's the point of oh, paying me? What's the, the point money. of paying me 6,000 euros to do a course when you're, when you're listening to this guy yeah. Yeah, who's doing the same course as you? So, yeah, it, it's hard because it's both, it is both the coach and the student's fault um, at times. And this is good coaches do, you know, appreciate very much so that it's their job to connect to the student. Even though the student is extremely difficult, you've still got to be to connect to them. That is your skill. As a, as a teacher but yeah as andy says look if if there's more in if there's more in the tank then and you're not making the next level you need to internalize you need to look and see what's going on around you you know and think as well you know is it my lifestyle is it you know is something stopping me from making that next step but in some cases be happy where you got to yeah. I think that's what we're saying, yeah. you know, be happy where you got to and and improve in different directions. You mm-hmm. know, it doesn't always have to be a million miles an hour and, you know, it can be just as pleasing teaching people at the, the more normal level of skiing. Yeah, for sure. Very good. Well, I think that's about this one done. Till the next Anything one. Anything to add? Oh. Bye for now. Bye for now. Did you turn on the crickets I again? I turned on the crickets again. <laughs>